Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the G1000, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. Let's get started. So we're sitting here in the lovely Corvallis Twin Turbo, even though it's definitely a Columbia, it, is, it says Cessna on the side, and honestly it's more of a Sears than anything. And in today's video we're going to be taking a look at this lovely, lovely navigational system called the G1000. Now the G1000 has been around for a long time, and a lot of people have done a lot of cool things with it in the Flight Simulator 2024 version of it is actually pretty good and probably one of the better versions of it. There are a couple little tricks here and there and uh, we're going to be taking a look at them. But before I do any of that, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lean my mixture a little bit because uh, we're going to be sitting here on the ground. So the G1000 system is an all-in-one flight deck. Uh, you have two different displays. One on your left is going to be called your primary flight display, your PFD. And on the one on the right is going to be your multifunction display, which is known as your MFD. The easiest way to think about these, of course, is uh, this is going to be all your standard instruments. This is going to be the person holding the map for you. Now the system itself is relatively easy. You know, what you'll probably notice is that everything on these displays has little diagrams on them that are linked to some kind of button that are going to be nearby. If you take a look at the bottom, for example, you'll see or notice there's a bunch of little arrows and there's little boxes to basically tell you which one of the arrows is going to actually be lined up with. One of the things I find interesting is you have to actually line your head up with the arrow to actually have it centered. So if you're over here and you're not quite sure which one of these two buttons you're actually going to be pushing, you can always come down here. Another important thing to know about the G1000 is all of your autopilot controls are integrated directly into it and are on the outside of the actual G1000 control. As a matter of fact, when you look at our MFD on the right, you'll notice the actual buttons for activating autopilot modes are also located directly on there. Finally, you'll notice that all of your communications controls are also built into the system. If you notice up in the upper left corner, for example, I have some navigation frequencies and I have some communications frequencies. If I want to actually make adjustments to these, I have specific dedicated knobs for that particular purpose on here. Now, one of the other things you need to know about a G1000 system is most knobs consist of two parts. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on a couple of these knobs so you can kind of get a feel for it. There's the wide part, I call it the big part, and there's often the small part, I call it the tiny part. Now, the reason this is important is they're going to do different things. For example, on our course and barrow knob, you'll notice my triangly button here, which is going to be the smaller one, will adjust my course that you can see down here. Whereas if I grab the big knob, you're going to see that it adjusts my barometric pressure for both systems here. Now, the reason that gets important is when we're doing things with the FMS control, you'll notice it's got the big knob, little knob. As a general rule, the paradigm states that whenever you have the big knob, it's big things like pages. Whenever you have a little knob, it's little things like values. If you always think about it that way, you'll be safe. The last paradigm that you're going to have to watch out for is some knobs have the ability to push. You know, one of the things you'll notice, for example, is this is push cursor. If I come over here and I click on it, nothing will happen. Now, one of the big changes in Flight Sim 2024 is they made a push a right-click action. So if I right-click on this mouse, you see how it pushes the button in? And that would give me the ability to go ahead and make those adjustments. Now, the first thing we're going to show you how to do on a G1000 is how to make adjustments to communications and navigation frequencies, something you're going to have to be doing plenty of, I'm sure. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pretend we want to change our communication frequency. You'll notice we have a COM1 and we have a COM2. This, of course, is going to be our second radio. It's really, really good for things like ATIS and the real plane when I fly. And of course, the first one, the top one, is usually for any sort of communication between tower or something along those lines. Let's say we wanted to make an adjustment to our COM1 frequency. We'll go to 121.6. The way we would do it is we'd see this little blue box around it. We grab our comm knob. Now remember what I said, the big knob's always for big things, the little knob's always for little things. In this case, if I hold my mouse over the big knob and roll it, you'll notice that changes the big number. This is my one, two, one. Now if I use the little knob and hold my mouse over it, I can go ahead and adjust it. One of the things they've done to make this a little different is if you click now and drag, you can actually precisely control this. It's actually almost easier than using the mouse. Now if I let go, it's going to go ahead and set that frequency. Now the interesting thing is this is now my standby frequency. If I actually want to listen to it, I'd have to press the swap button to go put it over here. Now the next thing we're going to take a look at is how we get to COM2, which is frequently what I use for ATIS. Now you're probably sitting here going, uh, can I click on it? No, it's not a touch screen, so it does not give us that capability. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to come over here, and I've got my COM knob real clear. I'm going to go ahead and pull it out. And now by pulling it out, I right clicked on it, and that's going to now highlight my new frequency. Now I use the exact same system. So if I want to do uh, 126.45, for example, uh, we can just come in here, click and drag that. Of course, if you have external hardware, you can do it this way. And just like before, I can press this button to swap to it. One of the things you need to remember when you do this, though, is it's not going to automatically snap back to COM1. If you want to go back to COM1, you have to actually click that by right-clicking on it like that, just snap back over to the COM1 setting. Now, another thing you need to know, too, is just because we've put a frequency into COM2, we didn't turn on COM2, the buttons in the middle are what's going to control that. 
Now, the way the system works with the audio is pretty straightforward. All your audio settings here are basically divided into what are you talking to versus what are you listening to? So right now you'll notice we're talking on COM1 and we have COM1 selected to listen. Let's say I wanted to listen to that ATIS frequency. All I would do is I'd select COM2 and that would activate that frequency. Now I'm on the other side of a mountain right now, so I can't actually pick up a 12645 here, but if I were a little bit closer, I could do that. Now the cool trick here is if I wanted to talk on COM2, I could actually click on it. But the thing you have to know is I'm now talking to COM2 and listening to COM1 and 2. This is a very quick way to get very confused. Uh, one of the things you can do too is you can actually shut COM1 off completely. Uh, the reason you gotta be really cautious with that is if somebody starts calling you and you don't realize you have this one off, you're gonna be in a bad place. Uh, we also have a COM3, we have a COM1 and 2, which is a little interesting. And of course you have TEL, which um, I don't have the telephone option. Now uh, your Bluetooth headphones probably have that. There's a couple other options in here, and then the important one here is gonna be my nav one. This allows you to listen into frequencies of things like VORs and stuff like that. Speaking of VORs, let's go take a look at that now. Now, believe it or not, the entire world is not all going to consist of GPS waypoints. Sometimes you gotta do things the old fashioned way, such as doing an ILS approach. So looking up here up at the nav one, it uses the exact same paradigm as using our communication radios. You'll notice right now my standby for nav one is 11390, and I'm currently on 110.50. Now let's say I wanna put this over to Hartford VOR. I can come over here, use the little knob for the little values, use the big knob for the big values. Then I can press my swap button. Now, as soon as I do that, you will notice something changed. It says HFD and it's also turned green here. Now that's basically telling me the fact that I'm on Hartford VOR. It's actually identified it for me. If I wanted to, I could come over here and I could actually press this button. And what you heard there was the actual identifier in the event that I wanna identify it conventionally. Now the system works the same way over here. For example, if I pulled this out, now maybe I wanna set in an ILS frequency. I wanna do uh, 11110 or something like that. I can switch it over here and it should say, yeah, and yeah, it makes sense, so we're relatively close. So we can pick up the ILS for Bradley there, but it gives you an idea it's the exact same method. And again, I can pull this out if I wanna go back to this. Now you're probably sitting here saying, well, I guess that's it for navigation radios. Is there any other navigation radio? And the answer is, yeah, there's a secret hidden navigation radio that you have built into here, right down here at the bottom. This is ADFDME on it. Now, in the event that you wanted to use an ADF, you can actually push this button right here to bring up a little sub page that allow you to tune your ADF directly. Now, the cool thing here is this is gonna be a great example of how to use the FMS knob. See how this is highlighted right now? If I were to go ahead and grab the big knob and move it around, you can see that it lets me change my page. If I grab the little knob, you'll notice it lets me now change my value. This is an excellent example of how to set a value. So for example, let's say I want to turn to 388, which used to be the Clara NDB. I can now use this one to select my digit and use this one to dial in the digit. So for example, if I wanted to go 388, Eight, just like that, all I could do now is I could set it. I love the fact it tells you right here, press enter to transfer. I press the ENT button once, I press the ENT button again, and it will go ahead and transfer those values over for me. So you can see in this case, I'm on 388, uh, which is actually pretty good, uh, which would be this. So if you're ever wondering where the ADF is, it's buried down here. You'll also notice that there's a DME option here. We can actually pick in what we're getting our DME values for, but we're gonna take a look a little more about that later on. So I'm actually gonna close this menu. There are two different ways to close menus, by the way. You can either push the button again, or you can always come over and press the clear button depending on it. Now in a normal G1000, pressing and holding clear will immediately clear the whole screen out and push you default. They did not program that functionality here, but that's okay. You can always run down and press that button again. So at this idea time, you should have a pretty good idea of how to set your different frequencies on here, as well as how to kind of set up some of your basic components. Now, the reason this is such a useful device is you can just do those things on the fly and program them. You're good to go. Everything's ready to rock. Simple as that. Now, what we're gonna take a look at now is how to use a little bit of navigation on here. Now, the navigation is very, very, very powerful and very flexible on this particular device. We have the ability to dial in flight plans, or we have the ability to do vertical navigation. All these different components are actually completely simulated on our G1000 unit. But for today, because we're just sticking to the basics, we're gonna go ahead and flip over and set up ourselves a very basic flight plan. So the way we can do this, of course, is we can either use the direct button by pressing this and dialing in our waypoint, or we can use the flight plan page for the purposes of dialing in our individual components. Now there's another hidden flight plan page, if I were to come over here and actually adjust this, that we can take a look at. You can see it's basically chilling right here. And this is a very effective way to do it as well. But we're looking for a quick and dirty tutorial here. We're not looking for going into too much more detail than we needed before. So I'm gonna come over here, press my direct button. You'll notice there's this little tiny keyboard icon that's flashing. If I were to click on 
done that, you can now simply type in the keyboard. If you choose not to do that, of course, you can use big knob to change your digits. You can use little knob to change our values. I'm going to click on the keyboard button. I'm going to go ahead and keep this real simple today. I'll go to uh, change EDM. And of course, when I'm ready, make sure you shut the keyboard button off. All you have to do now is say whether you not want to activate it or you want to hold it. One of the things I think is really cool here is if you were to come over to your FMS knob and right click on it, you'll notice it doesn't take away our cursor here. But if I press the enter button, it's automatically defaults to taking away our cursor. Now, the cool thing is if I sit here and I'll wiggle this, you can actually see that it gives us the ability to go ahead and pick the other options. We can't pick Alt or anything like that someday, but we can select the course if we wanted to. I'm not going to worry about that today. Cool thing here, though, is I can come right down where it says activate, press the enter key, and now that is now selected. Now, if I were to look at my MFD here, you'll notice that this new pink line, the magenta line of safety, we always like to jokingly call it, is now guiding us to our destination. We can even come over here and adjust our range, for example, if we want to see it way, way, way up there, Gardner, Maine. I'm sorry, Gardner, Massachusetts. And it's pretty much ready to go, so we knew everything like that worked. But the problem is, if you come down to our HSI, you'll notice that this is not pointing in the direction that we wanted to actually be pointing in. It's actually still locked onto VOR1. So even if I were to go over here and start cranking on this course, actually, that's the barometric setting, be careful which one you grab. Even if I were to sit here and start cranking on this, for example, and trying to get it to wherever I want, this is still going to be linked to the VOR. And they can notify you in big, big, big letters that this is VOR. In GPS, in Garmin, they always use magenta for GPS. So if you ever see green, that means something else. So kind of keep that in mind. So in this case, I want to change this so that it points to where we want to go. To do that, you'll have a button called CDI. If I click it once, it'll say lock two. Uh, simply is locked onto nav two. If I click it one more time, it now says GPS and it now says ENR, standing for en route. The other thing it will do for us is it'll tell us our desired track, which of course is 49 degrees to take us up to Gardner. Now all I have to do is uh, take the plane up, follow this little magenta line to safety, and it'll get me on my way to where I need to go. So that is a basic tutorial on how all the different components on here works. In our next video, of course, uh, we'll get into a little bit more detail. Uh, we'll go ahead and show you how some of the different functionality works, including the automatic pilot. We'll also go ahead and take some time to kind of show you some more advanced flight planning. Enjoy.